What's going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create an audio spectrum in After Effects. Now what you're seeing on screen right now is different types of audio spectrums you can create and they're all really simple to do and let's get into it. So here we are in After Effects CC 2017. First thing you need to do, come up to composition, select new composition. From there, make sure it's at 1920 by 1080. If you want to do 720, by all means you can. And then from there, select OK. Now drag in your audio, so mine's right here, and drag this to your timeline. So the next thing we need to do is create a solid. And the way we do that, we come up to layer, new, and select solid. From there, just select OK. Now this is going to be dark grey and this is where we're going to be creating the audio spectrum. So selecting on this dark grey solid 1, what you want to do is come up to effect, select generate and from here you're going to see there's two types of audio spectrum. There's audio spectrum and there's audio waveform. So this is what audio waveform looks like. Um, but if I go across nothing is happening just yet there's no reaction so what you need to do where it says audio layer you want to select one and you want to make sure it is selected to your instrumental or your music so now that is selected to my music so if i play this through now you won't be able to hear it but this is how it will look so you can see this is the waveform pretty old school zigzag and then the other one i'll be showing you effect generate this is audio spectrum of course this is the one I'm going to be using this is how it's going to start off and again we need to make sure the audio layer is selected to our music and if I come across a bit you can see as we are playing the music this is reacting up and down not just in one place so you can see there you go so this is the one we need to create the audio spectrum I'm just going to run through everything on the side down here so you get a better understanding if you don't care and you just want to get straight into the settings you need to use, then by all means skip to the time that I put on the screen right now. But anyway, of course the first thing is the audio layer. So this is where you would always need to select your music you're going to be using. So this one right here is for me. You of course will have something else there. And now as for the start and end point, this is basically positioning it and sizing it. So if we move this one, you can see we can make it smaller or we can make it bigger. And same for the one below it, which is the end point, we can make it bigger or smaller. It's all personal preference, there's no actual correct thing on this part. And then we also get control of the y-axis on either side. Next is path. So currently it says none, but if we get the pen tool, and I just draw out uh, this for example, we can now select path and select mask 1, and the audio will now react from this path. So you can see it right there. So you can be pretty creative with that. You can make your own audio spectrum. Next is the frequency bands. So the bands are these lines you're seeing right here. So if I was to put them close, uh, put this higher up, there'd be more bands. So you can see they get closer together. But if you put it down, then there's going to be more of a space between each of them like this. Next we have maximum height, so again the height of these lines. So if I put this up you can see they can go really big but you don't want to go too big because it will cut off screen. So make sure you be sensible when picking one of them. Moving on to the thickness, so you can see these bars here are quite thin but if we put them up you can see they go really thick. Now they also look pretty blurry. This brings us on to the next one which is known as softness. So if I turn that softness down, you can see now it's more of a sharp look. But of course, personal preference, you might like it with this. So that's how it'll look with the softness and thickness. And again, you just be creative, you pick how you want it to look. And then here we have the inside and the outside color. So the inside color, um, you can see the by default, it's a bright pink and a darker pink. So let's go with a light green and we'll go with a dark green. So that's how this will look. And you can see just like that we've changed color. Now we can make it look a little bit more better. So this is the hue interpolation. And if you spin the wheel counterclockwise, we'll be introduced to more colors. Now that's one full turn or close to one full turn. And you can see we have the rainbow or most of the colors. And then if we go again, more and more colors will keep coming in like this. Uh, completely up to you how much you want it. I'm just going to have mine there. 
Now we have the dynamic hue phase. Now this is quite important. If it is not checked, watch the colors. So as I'm playing through, the colors are all staying in one position. However, if I have dynamic hue phase checked and play it through, the colors are now moving around with the audio as well, which personally to me, I think looks better, but it all depends on personal preference, how you like it. Then we have color symmetry. So right now the colors are evenly separated, but if we take color symmetry off, you can see they're basically all over the place now. But again, personal preference depends how you like it. Then we have display options. So we have digital, analog, which is the uh, zigzags. And of course we have analog dots. Pretty cool, this one is. So it's basically dots just jumping about. And then we have side options. So we have side A, side B, and side A and B. So side A and B right now um, is kind of what I mentioned earlier, how the bars are going up and they're also coming down. If we have it set to side B only, then the bars will be set coming down only. So you can see the bars aren't going up. So this will be good if you're going to have the audio waveform at the top. And then of course side A, if you haven't worked out by now, it's just the opposite. So then this line in the middle, nothing's going to be below it. The audio is all going to be on top. So that's everything. Uh, that's the run through of everything down here. And let's get into the actual settings I recommend you to use. First of all, I want to make this a circle. Now we can't do it from here. We could use polar path, but it doesn't really look good. So what we're going to be doing is coming up to effects and preset, come to the distort folder. And from there, you want to look for polar, where is it? Polar coordinates, drag and drop this on. And this is what you'll get down here. You want to make sure the type of conversion is set to react to polar and the interpolation is at 100%. You can see we already got our circle and we have our audio moving very slightly. Now you'll notice in the middle here there's a gap and the audio form does not go all the way around in a circle. So to fix that we need to be altering the start and the end point. So this first 192 here we're going to change to 10. And then for the end point, the first number here, which is 1728, we're going to change this to 1982. From there, that is now done. It's in a circle. Now, moving on to the start frequency, I recommend 10. And as for the end frequency, I recommend 500. Frequency bands is completely optional. What I like, though, is 75. I think that's a really sweet spot. Again, it depends. Um, how you want it to lock. Then we have maximum height. Again, this is going to be completely optional because depending what type of music you have, these uh, bands will be flying off screen. Uh, and it also depends how big or small you have your audio spectrum. So you can see um, there are some loud parts in this song. For example, right there, you can see how loud them audio spectrums are. Um, it's coming in quite a lot. But for me, 6500 is what I'm going to keep it at. You can have 6500 and then just work off that. The audio duration I'm going to set to 150 and the audio offset I'm going to leave the same. Now back onto the thickness. Um, again, this is all personal preference. So you can choose how thick you want it. You can have it really thick or you can stay middle and I'll stay about 10. Softness, again, personal preference. Do you want it to look soft or do you just want it to stay like this? For me, I'm going to have no softness. Now, of course, we have the hue wheel again. Um, I'm going to have mine here, so we have more variety of colors. I'm going to leave dynamic hue phase on. I'm going to leave color symmetry on. I'm going to keep it at digital, except for side A, I'm going to change to side B. What this is going to do is going to make these lines from the inside come to the outside. So that's the standard way how you usually see it. So you can see like that, if you have side A and B, of course, it'll be both. Again, you can make a pretty cool effect like that if you want it. But for me, side B is how I want it. And just like that, you're done. So if I play this through a little bit, you can see the audio is now playing perfectly and it's matching up with the reaction. So if I come across to the part where the song actually drops, so you can see as I play it through, it's going to lag a bit because I'm recording and I'm also um, on After Effects cause it takes up a lot of RAM. But just like that it is done, you can see I've probably picked a good um, bandwidth and along with the maximum height, it's just about not going off screen. But that's how simple it is to create your own audio spectrum in After Effects.